And Paul mentioned that you guys do expect Leo Chanel back at practice and, and ready to play this week. And I know you talked about Mike Mascalunas filling in well for him, but I'm sure there are some things Leo can do that other guys can't. What do you hope you will get back from Leo this week? Obviously, number one with Leo, the, the physicality he can play with. I mean, he's he's kind of freaky athletically. We know that. Uh, he's he's an imposing guy playing that position. Um, find ways to get him downhill and, and go wreck a game for an offense. And excited to have him back. You know, we, we was able to practice a little bit last week. So um, excited for, for him to get back in the mix and just going to have to help him control those emotions because, you know, he's got a little, little pent-up emotion from missing those first couple games. Jim, what, if anything, is different about what Jack Cohn's doing with Notre Dame through three games compared to when he was here? And also, what do you expect from him um, knowing what you've known about him for so long? Yeah, I, I think you see a lot of similar things. You know, from a concept standpoint, the throws they're asking him to make, he's always played with a lot of confidence to me. And seeing him get through progressions and be aggressive, you know, throwing the ball down the field, uh, he's he's done a great job in that offense up to this point. And, uh, you know, the thing that I always respected about Jack, had a good relationship. We talked a lot. You know, he was a guy who could see it on tape. He was a guy who could talk it and then apply it on the field. And, and that's what I see. So um, excited for him. He's just got to have one bad game this year. Uh, outside of that, I, I wish him all the best. Jim, when you look at your defense, it's been really good defending the pass over the middle, which is what a lot of teams with the RPO and other things are, are relying on in recent years. What do you think you guys do that really shuts down that area of the field? Uh, it's, it's obviously a huge emphasis in, in our defense, in our scheme. Um, teams do a really good job of creating space in the middle of the field. And you know, we try to do our best to, to limit that and, and not let them clear you out right? with, with running backs or, or people to the flat, stuff like that. So um, in everything we do, you, you're trying to find ways to kind of condense that part of the field, you know, cloudy the vision up a little bit for the quarterback. And you know, a lot of that, in, in my mind, is, tr is being aggressive. Right and, and playing on your terms and, and your speed, right? Making a team speed up sometimes they can't get all the way through some of those progressions that take a little bit more time to develop. Just in general, how do you feel about the way the defense has performed these first couple games, and where do you think y'all can get better? Um, proud of the guys. You know, they, they've played extremely hard. Um, done a good job limiting limiting points. You know, playing really well on third down, um, but. That's starting on first and second down, right? Being very disruptive up front. Um, D-line, linebackers really making some plays, getting some TFLs, getting guys behind the sticks. Um, you know, the thing that you always just stress because it's a weekly thing is turnovers, right? Finding ways in big moments to create turnovers, right? Whether it's third down or red zone, doesn't really matter, right? You, you know you're going to get in big moments of the game, and, and that's the difference. You know, take a look at Penn State and, and, and ours. Like, we both played dominant on defense. They created a couple turnovers, and we weren't able to. So that's the emphasis, and they, they don't carry over from week to week. So um, every single week, you got to go out there and find ways to, to take the ball away from the opponent. Uh, and, and the bigger the moment, um, the better it is to get those, uh, those turnovers. Jim, following up on that question, your front seven so far, it seems, has, has played fairly well. Um, was there something schematically that you thought you could do differently with the group this year? Or is there anything in particular you can put your finger on that you think has been more effective this year? I think the biggest emphasis we had with that grouping was a little bit more attacking mentality. Um, you know, tried to clean up some of the technique and things on our movements and seeing uh, you know, big improvement in, in production, right? You're seeing those guys not only be disruptive, but make tackles for a loss and get sacks and, and really um, put pressure on the quarterback consistently the first couple of weeks. And, and that was something going back to last year that we just felt like we still had a lot of room for growth. And uh, guys bought into it. And uh, I like the way they're playing right now, playing physical, eliminate, eliminating the run game in a lot of ways. And, forcing teams to be more one-dimensional. And uh, like I said, just trying to have a little bit more of an aggressive mindset. And our linebackers are really good. You know, we don't need to, to take up blocks, right? We can be disruptive. They, they'll make their own plays and, and things like that. So um, like I said, it's so far so good. Uh, this season, we got another big test coming up. Jim, do you see any similarities between Notre Dame and Penn State in this regard offensively? 
their willingness and ability to test teams vertically with multiple threats. Yeah, they are similar in, in that way. Um, they, they're going to throw the ball vertically down the field, and they've been a big play offense, right? That's kind of swung momentum in, in their last couple games in, in a big way. You look at what they did versus Toledo. You look at what they did versus um, Purdue. Sorry. Um, a number of play. There was four or five kind of big chunk plays that really swung that one. Um, Purdue played them pretty well on defense, you know, lim eliminating the run game in, in a lot of ways. And, you know, all of a sudden they, they hit a big one for a touchdown and, and kind of changed the momentum and kind of just made them comfortable. They didn't have to panic. They didn't have to press. And, but yeah, it, it's easy to see on tape. They're going to give their playmakers opportunities down the field. You know, they're going to put some 50-50 balls up there and just – see who can make a play. So, you know, DBs understand that. You know, we have to get in position to go attack the football because they're, they're going to go up, they're going to be physical, they're going to use their hands, and, you know, we got to go up there and finish those plays. Jim, what kind of challenges does a tight end like Michael Mayer present to the defense, just especially them out there splitting them out and kind of put them in different situations? Yeah, they do a great job of creating matchups. Um, they, they move him all over the place. They try to get him free access off the ball because he's a guy that, you know, when he starts to build up space and, or build up speed and he can create some separation and, and obviously very physical at the point of attack and, and the top of his routes and things like that. So um, they do a great job. You have to identify him. They're going to move him. Like I said, they're going to put him in some positions that you don't traditionally see some of these tight ends. And, uh, you know, big emphasis to f get him targets, right, and, and get him off the ball. And, um, Love the way he, he plays when he has the ball in his hands. He's physical. He's, he's trying to, you know, yards after catch is, is a huge part of his game. So um, we got to be smart. You know, we, we have to create matchups that we like on him as well. Um, and we have to identify him when he's, when he's moving kind of in some of those underneath zones because that's, that's where he's really done a great job of kind of catch and run situations. Jim, another uh, explosive player too, Kyron Williams, just talking about you know both ends, not only on the rushing attack, but also on the passing game, averaging just over 100 yards total. Um, how are you making sure that the defense contains him, both in the backfield and the passing game? Yeah, another guy that they make you find him, right? They're going to move him. They're going to get him out of the backfield. Um, just as dynamic in the pass game as he is in the run game. You know, They do a great job with with both of their running backs, really, of creating touches and getting them on the edge of the defense, um, you know, whether it's a run scheme or, or a pass scheme. So um, last week he was a difference maker, right? He, he had uh, the run to kind of close it off as far as that long touchdown. He has the first touchdown in, in the pass game. So really impressed with the way he plays. Uh, willing blocker, right? They'll put him in a pass protection situations, and he and he throws it in there and does a great job for him. So you know, truly is a complete back. You know, makes you put him on the ground every play. Like he's not falling down on contact. He's a guy that's running through tackles and and uh, just respect the way that he plays. And uh, obviously, he's been a big time player for them for the last couple of years. Jim, you faced two quarterback systems before. What? Do you anticipate will be the challenge with Buckner in there, and, and how do you prepare for Jack and, and Buckner as well? Yeah, we've we've done it before. Um, obviously, they're both extremely talented. You know, it's not um, a situation where there's a guy struggling and and they have to kind of go back and forth. They truly have guys who present different types of issues for your defense. So um, it, it just makes you be smart. You got to identify that, um, kind of understand what they like to go to with each quarterback in the game. Um, Buckner is, he's a talented guy and, and you look when he's been in the game, they've created a lot of energy <laughs> and, and they've had a lot of big plays. So um, you definitely have to have a good plan and, and understand he changes the math in the run game. He, he does a great job with the ball in his hands. Pass game, they love to get him on the edge, right? Get get the ball in his hands with some space and and just let him create and uh, and make plays. So they do a great job. I, I think even you look back the last couple of years at their tape and quarterbacks do a tremendous job of extending plays, right? Both to run and to pass. Uh, it's kind of impressed. It's amazing, really, how how many third downs and first downs they've created, big plays that they've created just by extending plays, by breaking the pocket, whether they kept the ball and, and ran or, or found receivers kind of late in the down when, when people had them stop. So big emphasis this week is, is how we handle kind of those late, 
late play situations of, of plastering receivers and just continuing to work to the quarterback and being smart in your rush lanes. Jim, kind of a, a general question on the sport regarding targeting. Every week we see calls that people line up on one side and say it was or it wasn't. There was one in the Penn State game. I don't know if you saw it, the one I'm referring to. But do you, do you feel the rule is doing what it was intended? And do you think an automatic ejection is too harsh, especially when you as a coach and people know the guy wasn't trying to light somebody up? Yeah, I mean, fortunately for me, I was still playing when this change started to happen, right? It was the end of my career. And, you know, having been fined for, for those bang, bang, bang plays, uh, it's so hard. It's so difficult. I, I understand the intent of the rule, right? There are certain hits that need to be, if not eliminated from the game, right? Like they, they need to be punished, but high majority of targeting penalties to me are not malicious. It's, it's bang, bang plays where guys are getting punished in such a big way for something that's almost impossible to get out of the game, right? And I understand that there there is like what's what line? Where do you draw the line? I get that, and and you're putting it back into the officials' hands a little bit on what the intent of the play is. But I think it should have to be pretty clear in order to get kicked out of a game. You know, I don't make the rule; we just have to to live by it. But um, it's hard to see guys get kicked out of games for really bang bang situations that you can tell like it's not. It's not a malicious thing, and, and in some cases, it doesn't even seem like a, a foul at all, let alone getting kicked out of the game. So um, it's tough. It's part of what we have to deal with. Um, it definitely adds another element to that whole next man up mentality because it doesn't even have to be an injury, right? It doesn't have to be anything, anything crazy. It's just kind of a bang-bang play. Every time you see a bang-bang hit, you just you look and you wait. And you understand the officials, like, they're taught to throw it, and we're going to look at it anyway. So we'll get it figured out. Um, it's just, to me, it's, I hate watching that as a defensive coach and just a fan of football. You know, any big play on the defensive side, any big hit, you're just kind of, you're just waiting because it seems to be the trend that it's going to come. Got time for two more for Coach. I'll hold back. Jim, just talking about how big of a weekend this is for Wisconsin sports, of course, your game, and I'm sure, of course, you guys are focusing on that, but also Ryder Cup's happening this weekend. Brewers are making their playoff run or getting ready for that, and then also Sunday night football for the Packers. You know, how exciting is it to be part of this slate for Wisconsin sports? Yeah, it's an honor, right, to see the, the success that's going on in the state right now just across all these sports and uh, – the excitement and we know Wisconsin is a huge sports state and just to see um, how everyone is is kind of just playing off of each other it seems like with with the Bucks starting it off and then the Brewers and us uh, as you mentioned the Ryder Cup just a lot of eyes on the state and and I think we've always done a great job of representing what Wisconsin's about and and the passion that our fans have so it's exciting to be a part of it and obviously it's it's gonna be a lot of fun going down to Soldier Field and playing a team I think a lot of people have have been waiting for this game you know for for a lot of years uh Jim I know you're not probably watching a ton of Notre Dame defensive tape right now but Kyle Hamilton as a former safety what, what stands out about him and the way he's playing the last you know year and a year plus I uh, have definitely studied him. Um, to me, the most impressive thing is just the amount of ways that he makes plays. You know, that's – have a lot of respect for his game because it's not like a, a guy he, – he's not that one-trick pony where it's like, hey, he does this one thing really well, and they're smart enough to have him do it over – he's making plays all over the field. Run game, pass game, man coverage, zone coverage, you know, blitzing. Uh, it, it's impressive to watch. You forget how big he is. Right when you see how well he moves, so I mean everything that he's generating as far as buzz around him is 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 earned. Um, it's it's fun to watch a guy like that play. You know, very instinctual on the back end, which which is half of the battle, and uh, it, it is cool to watch. I hope he doesn't make any plays this week, but you know, high likelihood that he's going to be somewhere around the football.